Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to the second video tutorial under the web development course wherein we are developing a complete portfolio website using html css javascript and bootstrap so this is the part 2 in this entire video tutorial series playlist or course you can say in the first video what we did is we took a very brief introduction to what exactly is the course all about and we also saw the website that we are going to be developing using bootstrap so that it becomes responsive and we saw the prerequisites and things that are going to be included so if you have missed that video do check that out and with that being said let's start off with today's topic so in today's topic we are going to be taking a theoretical look at what is exactly the bootstrap framework at a very basic level we'll just try to understand it and at the end of this video we'll download the bootstrap library onto our system and we'll set things up we'll create a project folder and include that bootstrap library into our project folder so that we can start off with the programming or coding in the next video in the upcoming videos Okay so what is bootstrap framework now bootstrap is at a very basic level the most popular html css and javascript framework for developing responsive mobile first websites now this responsive mobile website behavior we saw in the previous video wherein we took the demo of the website that we are going to be developing and we saw how the divisions and images start to shrink and change their position depending upon what the screen size is wherein we were shrinking the browser and the images and the divisions were also aligning accordingly So Bootstrap is a sleek, intuitive and powerful mobile first front end framework for faster and easier web development. So it makes web development at least mobile first web development very easy because it provides a lot of predefined classes in the terms of CSS styling and also JavaScript so that you can directly use them. Okay? So it uses HTML, CSS and JavaScript of course. It's a front end web development framework. And the amazing thing is bootstrap is completely free and open source and you can directly download it and use it it is being maintained by a group of experts who regularly update and add on to the new features currently i guess we are on fourth version bootstrap 4 so it keeps on changing over the course of time so if you are watching this video in future maybe there would be some new version of it so what does this bootstrap framework include so one of the most important thing is the grid system so bootstrap provides a basic structure with grid system which is a responsive mobile first fluid grid so this grid changes its structure according to the size of the screen so if you're watching it on a mobile that is if you're loading the website on a mobile the structure of the grid changes to adapt to that mobile screen okay if you're watching it on a tab again the structure changes and that changes can be controlled by us and what happens is the grid system divides the entire screen into 12 columns remember this 12 columns we're going to be needing this in further videos and it takes the size of the device or the viewport size okay we'll discuss more in detail when we move ahead in the next video about the grid system moving ahead we have custom css now bootstrap also comes with features of global css settings and a lot of css styling which is already predefined in the bootstrap library which we will be directly using and it will make a lot of things very easy for us in the development perspective then we have components so bootstrap contains over a dozen reusable components so they are directly drag and drop kind of components which we can directly copy paste into our system into our code and that's what we are going to be doing a lot because you also want to do smart development you don't want to type everything right we want to develop it in a practical perspective wherein our speed also is important so we are going to be using a lot of components also next comes javascript plugins bootstrap has a lot of javascript plugins and jquery plugins and we also have the option of customization so we are not going to be customizing a lot of things in this video tutorial series that's kind of like advanced topic but you have the option to customize a lot of components according to your needs according to your application so these are some of the things that are included in bootstrap framework but this is just a theoretical view and i know you guys must be like okay this is all theory we can kind of understand this that is a front end web development framework but you must be wondering how does it look like in the practical sense so now let's actually go to their website and download this bootstrap framework library onto our system and we'll try to include it into our project okay so what you have to do is open up your browser and type in this url getbootstrap.com or you can just google bootstrap and the first link would do it and this is how you will be presented with their official website you can read through the documentation you can read through their basic introduction build responsive mobile first projects on the web with the world's most popular front end component library and yes bootstrap is actually one of the most famous ones it's uh, highly popular and used a lot so it's an open source toolkit for developing html css and javascript and what not you know you can read through their documentation right now we are interested in getting started so just go ahead and click on get started so in terms of practical sense this bootstrap framework is nothing but set of css and javascript which is pre written by these experts 
which we are directly going to be using into our project that's about it you know in terms of practicality the framework is nothing but pre-written code in terms of css and javascript which we are directly going to be using okay so just scroll down over here and you can see there is the starter template what you can do is just copy this entire thing you can click on this button or you can select it all go to your folder create a folder i've created a test code folder inside that we have default.html now what you can do is you can entirely drag and drop this into your visual studio code so that's what i've done over here so you can see this is a blank default.html just paste that entire starter template and this is how it should look like okay so once this is done you can just run it with the live server plugin if you don't know what live server is go to this plugins extension section and type in live server make sure you're connected to the internet and this is that live server plugin by Ritwik Day. Click on it, just install it and restart your Visual Studio code. Then what you have to do is again go to your folder, project folder, drag and drop your entire folder over here. And then you'll see something like go live over here. Okay. So right now I'm already live. You can see you'll get an option of go live over here. Just click on it and then your browser will be opened up with this entire code running in. So what this live server plugin will do is it will make your code dynamic. So whatever you change over here, immediately it will be reflected into your output. So you don't have to save this and go ahead and refresh your browser. So let me just show you the browser also. So you can see hello world is already written over here because it is there in our body in the H1 tag. And there's a lot of script over here. We'll go through it one by one right now. So this is their starter template, which we just directly copy pasted from their getting started page. So once you run this, once you go live, what is happening is you are creating a local server onto which your file default.html is running. And one more thing that you can do is you can go to your settings, go over here, click on the settings button icon, go to the settings and type in save in the search box. And in the auto save feature, go to the after delay and give a delay of 500 milliseconds. Okay. So what this will enable is if you do not type in anything in the Visual Studio Code Editor, after every 500 milliseconds, your file will be auto saved. So once the file is auto saved, immediately the live server plugin comes into picture and this browser will be refreshed. So if I type in hello Tanmay and if I wait for 500 milliseconds, let me just type in, you can see the title got changed. If I just copy this and paste it in the H1 tag, immediately you can see without me coming here and refreshing this browser, the changes were already reflected. So this will increase your development speed because we want to be smart programmers also. We don't want to waste a lot of time. So this is possible because of this Visual Studio Code ID or Code Editor, Text Editor. If you're using any other text editor like Sublime Text or Notepad++, the only extra thing that you'll have to do is you'll just have to save this file and then refresh the browser. That's about it. And that's totally fine. But this makes your programming a little bit smarter. Okay. Okay. Now let's go through the code one by one. So first we have the heading tag. This is the entire heading tag inside which we have meta set UTF-8, which is the encoding. This is kind of like a standard thing, but this line is very important. This line is saying that your content width should be equal to device width. Okay. And the initial scale that is the actual scaling should be one, which is equal to what exactly it is. If you increase that, it will be scaled up or scaled down. Okay. And the meta name has to be viewport. Now you can Google this up. This is sort of like a by default thing that is needed when you're working with bootstrap and responsive websites. So the next thing is the bootstrap CSS file. Okay. Now what is happening is in order to use bootstrap into your project, there are two simple ways. Either you use a CDN. So a CDN is basically a server, which is on the internet. It's a content delivery network. That's what the full form is of a CDN. It is basically a high speed server on the internet where this bootstrap CSS file is located. So you can see this entire URL. This is where this CSS file is located. Now this integrity and cross origin thing is something related to security. You don't have to worry about it. But what we are basically doing right now is if you have internet, this will work. If you don't have internet, this will not work. Okay. So essentially what we're doing is we are working online right now. So the CSS file is online. What we are wanting to do is we want to actually download this file onto our system and use it offline because we are in development scenario. So usually when you're working in development environment, you work offline, you don't work online. So the way you go about this is what you can do is you can copy this entire URL, go to your browser, just paste that URL and you can see this entire bootstrap.min.css is already there. Right click on it. Just click on save as go to your test code project folder, 
inside this create a new folder named bootstrap okay go inside that create a new folder of css let's make it properly structured because this is the structure that we are going to be using throughout the entire series inside the test code inside the bootstrap folder inside the css we'll save this as bootstrap.min and the type has to be cascading style sheet okay just save it so one thing is done let's see the code again so this is the head tag wherein last thing is the title this is that title now the body starts inside the body we have heading tag h1 that hello tanmay text and you can see there is a different font and that is happening because we've included the bootstrap css so it changes the font it changes the look and feel of the entire website by default okay so if i just remove this you'll see that the font changes right so it's all because of css that the styling is already in implemented now coming below we have three different script tags so the first code is the jquery library that is the jquery.min.js which is a slim version basically the difference between a slim version and the actual version is some parts of the jquery code are cut out now if you don't know what is jquery jquery is a javascript library which is again open source and we can directly use it so if you want to get into details i have a complete series on javascript and jquery on telusco learnings i'll drop the link you can just go through it we are not going to be using a lot of jquery javascript in this entire series so you don't need to know a lot but if you just want to know a little bit more you can go check out those videos so again just copy paste this entire link go to the browser just paste it and you can get the entire library over here and this is all because we are online you need internet connection for this go ahead and save it now go to the bootstrap folder and create a js folder okay let's keep the css and javascript different inside that just save this as it is we don't need to rename it you can rename it to a simpler version but right now let's just keep it as it is so this is done similar to this the next one is popper.js so again this is something which is required in bootstrap for some kind of animations we'll talk in detail when we move ahead we are probably not going to be needing it but right now let's just download it again copy this entire link go to the browser paste it right click save as in the same js folder save it as popper.min.js coming back we have the last javascript library file which is the actual bootstrap javascript okay so just copy this paste it click on save as save it as bootstrap.min.js whatever the name you can rename it anyway and now we have basically downloaded all these files one css bootstrap file and three javascript files which are required for bootstrap okay now note that the order of these javascript files should be in this same order only that is first the jquery second the popper.js file and last the actual bootstrap js file okay so this is prerequisite predefined by bootstrap we have to follow it as it is coming back to the documentation so what we did is we completely took this template and all these links were all these bootstrap javascript files and css files which were on a cdn which were online so we downloaded them offline and now what we can do is instead of using them online we can now give the path which is there in our folder path right so i'm just going to erase this and remove this integrity and cross origin thing this is when you are using things online so in the href what you can do is now you can go to your folder you can na navigate to your folder just type in bootstrap you can see the folder comes up hit enter inside that first we want css right so go to the css folder and this is that bootstrap.min.js so once i click on it immediately you can see again the changes got applied if i just remove it immediately you can see the changes were reverted so which means that we have successfully downloaded the css file that is bootstrap.min.css file and it is directly applied over here similarly for the javascript also we are going to be doing the same thing remove all this integrity and cross origin thing in the url you just have to give your offline url go to the bootstrap folder in the js first thing is jquery the slim version now if you have other jquery version even that will work that is the actual version you don't have to use the slim version as i mentioned in the slim version some code is removed which is not necessary for bootstrap for the second one we have in the bootstrap folder in the js folder popper.min.js remove the integrity and cross origin again we don't need this and for the last one we have bootstrap js bootstrap.min.js again removing all this extra stuff 
okay so this is our complete setup and this is the complete template and everything that we are going to be working on henceforth in the further videos is going to be on this template so have you understood this entire tutorial if not i'll be sharing this entire code in the video description so after every tutorial i'll be sharing that code in the video description so you can stay updated i would not recommend that you entirely copy paste everything if you are a beginner i would recommend that you type it out along with me because even i'm going to type as much as possible and a lot of things are coming from the bootstrap website itself so we are going to be using a lot of stuff from there also but as much as possible try to type it out okay so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the basics of what exactly is bootstrap so basically summarizing everything bootstrap framework is nothing but set of some library files basically this css and this bootstrap.min.js file in terms of practical sense and what it helps us achieve is it helps us with mobile responsive optimization it gives us some extra classes it gives us some extra components it gives us the grid system and it makes designing and development much more faster and easier okay now these jquery and popper.js are not a part of bootstrap they are extra things which are required for bootstrap to work and they should be in this order as i mentioned so do note that as well okay so that's it for this video guys if you like this video give it a thumbs up do share it with your friends let me know in the comments how this video was and in the next video we'll see what is the bootstrap grid system and understand how it works so thanks for watching see you guys in the next video peace